Hi, I'm Angela, and I am a travel specialist here at Discovery Corps. I've been working for Discovery Corps for the past three years, and I've been fortunate enough to travel to a variety of different countries. Um, but one destination that remains dear to my heart is Cuba. From the moment I hit the ground to the moment I had to leave, I was very much in my comfort zone. What I loved most about Cuba was all of the very ordinary things about the country. Um, so waking up to the roosters crowing and having breakfast with my casa host, hearing all the chatter on the streets, you know, this is something that happens day to day in Cuba and just being a part of it felt really special. So while I was in Cuba, I started off my time on the celebration of arts and culture itinerary, which was the best way to see Cuba in a short amount of time. You know, I love that we had enough days in Havana to be able to see, you know, the Cuban Fine Arts Museum. We spent time along the Malecon where we got to do a little, a lot of sightseeing, but also people watching, which is my favorite. Um, being able to just relax there at the Hotel Nacional for a drink and just get to know our guide a bit more and um, everything just felt so welcoming for us. We also got to tour Old Havana on a walking tour. Our guide is just so incredibly knowledgeable. All of them are truly. I was really taken aback to learn about how much they knew about Cuban history, Cuban art, um, you know, every time we would ask them a question, they gave us a full explanation and even cited their sources. You know, they are really knowledgeable about all things Cuba. I personally love the connections that we had with the guides. You just have this like fun banter with them throughout the trip and you leave sad. You don't want to leave them, but just knowing that you have a friend there in Cuba waiting for you to return, you know, is pretty cool. One of the perks about travel is getting to have awesome experiences with new people. Um, of course your guide, but also building relationships with new travelers. And when I was in Cuba, I got to meet uh, a dear traveler of ours. Her name is Elaine. Hi Elaine. And she's continued to go to Cuba with us year after year because she's done the same thing. You know, she's built up a relationship with our guides and country and it is now like her Cuban family. And we just love sharing that with all of our travelers, but the fact that somebody would want to return year after year means that these trips are making a lasting impact on you in one way or another. One thing that I really loved about Cuba was the fact that we were just unplugged. I mean, there were opportunities to connect to the internet, um, but it was seldom. So if you're looking for a trip where you can really just connect with your family and your kids and not have to see them staring at their screens, I would say this is the perfect opportunity. And that's something really fun that I was able to see, you know, people walking on the streets and they're actually talking to each other. and. Being able to share that experience together without the distraction of the phones uh, is a definite highlight. And that's something that I really loved about the trip. So traveling to Cuba, we do have to travel under one of the 12 categories according to OFAC, which is the Department of Treasury. And all of our travelers go under the license of support for the Cuban people. Well, on paper, that all makes sense. And as I was traveling there, I was trying to understand a bit more about how that would really play out in practice. And it became very clear to me when I did arrive that everything that we do in the itinerary really comes into contact with the local Cuban people. You know, even from the small paladars, the privately owned restaurants that we eat at, we are supporting, you know, directly the Cuban people. Um, even to staying at the Casa Particulares, which are small run, like bed and breakfast, so Cubans homes, to just have that one-on-one -on -one interaction, which really adds value to the trip. And I was able to see that in every activity that we did from start to finish. One afternoon in the celebration of arts and culture itinerary, we got to go to this really unique community art center called Moraleando, which I absolutely loved. Um, it was so cool because everybody there, they're volunteers, and so they're there because they want to be. And they're teaching kids and just various members of the community all sorts of different art. And everybody's just having so much fun, you know, they're dancing, laughing, just playing different instruments, and they pull you in with them. So you're part of the action, and you just create all of these fun memories that will last forever.
And I want to tell you about something really exciting that's happening this year. It's the 13th Havana Biennial Festival, which is a sprawling number of artists from all over the world who are coming to Havana to show off their artwork. Um, and this is extremely important this year because this hasn't happened in the last five years and it is also the 500th birthday of Havana. So there will be lots of celebrations. There's gonna be art installations out in the streets uh, along the Malecon. There's so. been a lot of anticipation growing up to this point. And we just had a conversation with our guide the other day and they mentioned that this really is a highly sought after time to be in Cuba because Locals absolutely love it, and they really wish that this happened, you know, every weekend there. You know, we always talk about it here in the office, how we all wish we could go, but we're excited to be sending you travelers there to experience a little bit of this yourself. If you're going to be traveling with us April 12th through May 12th, you'll be able to participate in the festivities. Well, I'm so happy to share my experience with all of you in Cuba. And if you do have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to call me or reply back to this email and I'd be happy to help.